sociology of religion uh, is a science uh, studied by a community of scientists called sociologists. Although many sociological <coughs> theorists are taught to you in different courses, but basically they are dealing with the same phenomena. Okay, their language is different because of different geographical and linguistic regions. For example, uh, take Karl Marx and other school and Tia school uh, in methodology of social sciences. You must have been taught about three concepts introduced by Tia school. They are scientific paradigm, routine science, and sociological theory or you know a new theory. Now, why these three concepts are introduced by TA school? Because this is how human mind works with a particular concept. The Kantian term, as I shared in the first class, are theological states that will correspond roughly with what Marx calls following Hegel thesis. Therefore, theological stage of August Kunt is similar to thesis in Karl Marx and Hegel and paradigm in T.S. Kuhn. Are you getting the point? Therefore, Different people may be using different terms, but basically they are communicating the same thing. That is theological state or paradigm or thesis. Is it clear to everybody? Now come to the metaphysical state. It corresponds to routine science in T.S. school and antithesis in Karl Marx and Hegel. In the same way, in August Kunt, you have positive state which corresponds to scientific law in T.A. school. Scientific laws are verified hypotheses or falsified hypotheses. When it gets falsified, you know, it no more remains a valid scientific hypothesis. But falsification of a hypothesis does not make the whole process meaningless because it is also learning experience. Now, in Karl Marx, you have for the third stage a term called synthesis. But uh, there is another thing which I wanted to share with you. Uh, those who have not read August Kunt in original, I'm not talking about you, because uh, we do not expect MA students to read Karl Marx in JNU, which is good or bad, it depends on you and you will be able to judge it maybe after 10-15 years in case you remain in academics but unless and until you will study at a school I'm sorry to say you will not be able to understand sociology as a practitioner uh, for example uh, I was reading a very popular commentator Uh, you all know his name. His name is uh, Anthony Giddens. It did not make me any sense in the empirical context, but it is a very popular text. In the same way, there is a very popular commentary 
by my PhD supervisor, uh, Professor Yogen Singh. Uh, you all know the name of the book. Uh, when I was a student of BA, I read this book and uh, I was, you know, uh, very impressed by the book, the way I was impressed by Mr. Talbot Parsons' book, A Structure of Social Action. But you know what I was doing, I do not know what you do. My teacher taught in the class and uh, we took notes and I expect you to take notes. I memorized it, you know, like a parrot. And when the teacher asked, I vomited the sentences after sentences, the way teacher had, you know, recited in the class. But in empirical context, it did not make any sense to me. Because the teacher had taught me, August Collins, I'm talking about early 70s, and he said that theological state of August Collins refers to the tribal society. And he is discussing with spirits. And then he, he was writing that uh, I'm referring to a particular uh, book which uh, predates Talbot Parsons and it was very popular when we were students. It is uh, still referred to in case there is a crisis. The name of the book is History of Sociological Thought by Barnes and Baker. It was 3000 page book and it was given to BA students. None of my classmates read it, including myself, but I read it after I finished my BA during summer vacation. And then I went to the teacher and said, sir, what you taught in the class and what is written in the book uh, is quite different. He said, shut up. <laughs> now, you are not expected to challenge the teacher. Even if you are very humble, I know in a mass education it is not possible. We were 300 odd students in one class. You are only 60 or something like that. And you know, in, in 60 minutes, we cannot expect that the teacher will entertain the questions and queries of every 300 students in the class. And there was no mic, you see. 300 students. I have also started teaching in the same style, therefore I am a little louder and sometimes it is not very pleasing to the ears, uh, nonetheless. What I found when I read August Holmes himself was that he was not referring to theological state in the context of tribal society or savagery, you know. Because then uh, most of the social scientists, those who were writing, were operating with a particular notion of social evolution. And uh, it was not followed by Charles Darwin. It predates Charles Darwin. And they were saying that, you know, the Arunta tribe studied uh, then by some other person. Now, it is associated with the name of Himal Durkheim. It is a very primitive tribe uh, of Australia now, no more there because they have also urbanized, industrialized, and they have become modern. But when uh, it was studied by the predecessors of Himal Durkheim, it was supposed to be like amoeba of, you know, the life uh, system, the most primitive, the most simple human life possible on earth. And they were operating that uh, like in uh, biological evolution, the social evolution is also linear and from Arunda tribe in Australia to United States of America, you know, there is linear progression from this to that. And my uh, teacher and the commentators, uh, you know, taught us collectively that uh, the theological state corresponded to uh, primitive society or pre-modern society. 
and then within the modern there are two subsections metaphysical and uh, uh, positive and they associated the first that is the theological with magic metaphysical with religion and positive with science this is how sociology of religion was taught anywhere in the world but today we are uh, in a better position uh, although it is not the final stage but I will share you what is uh, usually accepted by the majority of uh, uh, sociologists anywhere in the world that uh, there is no such thing as unilinear, unilinear evolution from Arunta tribe to United States of America and uh, August point uh, uh, definitely was not referring to the theological stage to savagery or barbarism. He was very much referring to, you know, the growth of science and not the human society. Are you getting the point? August Pont was not referring to human society and human evolution when he was discussing the law of three stages. Rather, he was referring to development of science of society in modern Europe. Actually, what he referred to by theological stage was the history of France in particular before the French Revolution. Therefore, the theological stage in August Kunt referred to the social history of France before the French Revolution. The metaphysical uh, stage for uh, August Kunt referred to the philosophy of French Revolution and it went to the Battle of Waterloo in which Napoleon, the major representative of the French Revolution ideals, was defeated. And uh, the positive stage uh, of Augustus referred to post-Napoleonic uh, academic exercise in France. In case you wanted to uh, refer to a particular uh, theorist or person, uh, the theological stage in Agassiz in France uh, is associated with the Protestant theologian John Calvin. Therefore, theological state means Calvin and his followers. The metaphysical state referred to Voltaire and his colleagues in France. And uh, the positive state uh, of uh, uh, science in France referred to the positive philosophy or scientific positivism propounded by Agassiz himself. Now let us come to Germany. The theological state referred to Martin Luther and his followers. The metaphysical state referred to Hegel and his followers. And the scientific state or positive state referred in Germany to a particular type of thought which is associated usually with scientific socialism of Karl Marx. Now let us come to uh, England or Meta United Kingdom. The theological state referred to Isaac Newton and uh, the metaphysical state referred to uh, Thomas Hobbes and uh, the positive state referred to Herbert Spencer. Therefore, in sociology of religion, uh, in the classical sociology of religion today, we have three major theorists and they are August Wundt, 
uh, Karl Marx and Herbert Spencer. But uh, uh, it is not possible to teach in three semester the three thinkers, theorists, scientists who studied religion systematically because the volumes, you know. Uh, for example, uh, in case uh, you are interested in reading Raghas Pont uh, and his view about religion, uh, I think it is almost impossible uh, for MA students to study it in uh, one of the four papers you study in one semester because they are odd uh, 20,000 pages in French which are still uh, uh, partly translated into English. In the same way, uh, take Karl Marx, uh, authentic English translation is still awaiting. Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, most Indians think that you can understand modern Europe by uh, the help of English language. This is not unfortunately the case. Because their first theologian or the first major thinker Isaac Newton did not write in the English language, he wrote in Latin. And uh, he wrote 40 odd books and Principia Mathematica is the 40th. You know, there are 39 other books and uh, most people in India think that Isaac Newton was a scientist, which he was not. He was not only a Christian uh, theologian, he always, you know, uh, appeared in public in the uh, dress of a Christian clergy. Once uh, the, uh, you know, uh, lab attendant uh, of uh, uh, Oxford said to him, sir, the new instructor in the lab had said that you cannot uh, come with this dress. Uh, Newton told rightly, then I am not entering the lab. Secondly, uh, this is not uh, by chance that I am referring to it, there is some logic in it. Uh, you must have heard a myth or a story that uh, Isaac Newton got his uh, law of motion and law of gravitation when he was sitting under a tree and that tree was the tree of the apple and uh, uh, the story says that he got this uh, uh, theory uh, when uh, an apple fell on his head. Uh, this story underlines three important uh, scientific puzzles. Puzzle number one, most uh, Indians think that science is something which is conducted in the lab, scientific lab, whereas uh, Newton claims, uh, and he was not wrong, he was only symbolic, metaphorical. You know, he was not saying or sharing something which is fiction. He was not sharing fact, he was sharing something in between the metaphor, the symbolic, uh, the theoretical. Uh, and what he meant by that, there is a long debate which we will uh, try to understand when we deal with magic science and religion. But I, I would like to uh, put forward uh, two sentences. Number one, the law of three uh, stages of August Pont is directly linked with the Newton's three law of motions. And uh, uh, most people think that you can understand sociology without any reference to uh, physics. Uh, I'm sorry. The majority of theorists uh, will not uh, agree with that, uh, but uh, there is a misconception that uh, uh, physics is difficult and sociology is easy. This is the other way around. 
August Wundt had written in the fifth volume of his Positive Philosophy. The first three volumes of Positive Philosophy of August Wundt uh, are not related with sociology of religion. The first three volumes of Positive Philosophy deal with uh, mathematics, astronomy, physics, and biology only four. The last two volumes are related with uh, the science of society called social physics in the uh, fourth volume and finally in the fifth volume he calls it sociology. Earlier the name of sociology was social physics but later on it was changed to sociology. Uh, second, he had got his last book and the name of uh, the last book is very interesting, The Religion of Man, The Religion of Humanity. He is the only sociologist who has written a book called Religion of Man. Now, uh, this, uh, uh, this, this book is usually not read by majority of contemporary sociologists because of different regions. But uh, let us come to our syllabus now. In case you are interested, I can discuss with you in very simple language which you can easily understand uh, Newton's uh, three laws of motion. Uh, uh, please believe me. Uh, in case you think you can understand sociology, you can easily master physics. According to August Wundt, and I agree with him, the most simple science on earth is mathematics, which any idiot can understand and master. It is very simple. The only wrong thing is that bad teachers teach mathematics. In case the teacher is normal teacher, or, uh, he or she can make your life, you know, the bed of roses. But unfortunately, most mathematics teachers do not cooperate with the students because of the Darwinian ideology. And what is the Darwinian ideology? Natural selection, struggle for existence and survival of the fittest. I am not saying there is something wrong in the theory. I am saying there is, uh, there is something fundamentally wrong in the application. You cannot expect a student to compete with Isaac Newton or Charles Darwin or Karl Marx or Emile Durkheim. Before you make them free to compete, let them empower equally. And there is a hierarchy I was referring to in the first class. Only elite students are taught theory properly. I have been a theory teacher. And uh, you know my uh, fellow colleagues who teach theory in different universities have been very angry to me. And then as a revolt, I started teaching cinema. It is not that I like cinema. I like uh, science and medicine because I am basically trained in those things. But you know, they do not want uh, that uh, theory, science, mathematics, astronomy, physics, biology should be taught in simple language because any idiot can understand these things. What is the most difficult science on earth? Sociology. Why? And I'm not, these are not my views. These are the views of other schools. And in case you wanted to read a reliable commentary on him, there is now one. When I was a student, it was not existing. There are three volumes you know, published by Cambridge University Press. Uh, these three volumes are edited by a lady called uh, Mary Pickering. And uh, these three volumes are very illuminating. 
but please don't read during the semester because it is not directly linked to your end semester exam. I do not want to punish you by giving you more knowledge. But in case you are interested, please read after your semester is over. In case you are interested in theory of any kind. You know, uh, you go to uh, School of Life Sciences or Physical Sciences or Environmental Sciences in J. And ask them, have they been taught ever in their life what is science? Science students are not taught what is science. They are not taught what is scientific method. Do you think it is just labs? There is a design, a structured inequality. They want to give you degree so that you work as a technologist. You do not work as a scientist. And please believe me, since 1838 or 36, uh, majority of uh, Indians have been intellectual bullies who are you know, just uh, uh, transferring data from India to the white world, primarily England. Now, what August Kunt wanted or what, uh, you know, Primal Durkheim wanted or what Karl Marx wanted? This is something which is fundamental to sociology of religion. I think you know that modernity is associated with enterprise, economic enterprise in particular. But what is economic enterprise? What is the, mean, uh, what is the meaning of economy? What is the meaning of matter? These are very difficult terms. For example, you must have heard about elites and masses. What is the meaning of mass? What you have been doing, you have been, your, your teacher taught it, you know, you read it in the newspaper, you read it in one, in one of the commentary, but never try to interrogate the technical meaning of the term involved. Unless and until you try to understand it, it will not empower you. Actually, there are four factors, they say, in modern discourse, land, labor, capital, and enterprise, isn't it? Entrepreneurship is associated with enterprise. Now, August Kohn says, Land is studied by astronomy. Labor is studied by biology. Capital is studied by mathematics. And the enterprise is studied by physics. According to August Kohn, land is studied by astronomy. Labor is studied by biology. Capital is studied by mathematics, enterprise is studied by physics. This was the classical theory of modernity. Modernity was a project which was founded on the four sciences, astronomy, biology, mathematics and physics. And sociology was developed as a coordinating science, as a synthetic science, which will coordinate the four sciences, astronomy, biology, mathematics, and physics, in such a way that there will be a just society on earth. Now, what is just society on earth for August Kunt? is a communist society for Karl Marx and mechanical solidarity for Durkheim or paradise for a person like Leo Tolstoy or Dostoevsky. Are you getting the point? Now what happened? 
there were uh, four, in, uh, four important paradigmatic events which defined uh, the society we are living in. Uh, they were industrial revolution, the French revolution, the religious reformation and the scientific revolution. After defeat of Napoleon, United Kingdom became the center of the global society imports which were emerging. Now what is this society? Is it the same society which Aristotle was referring? No. It is the society which Tony studied in the book Community and Society. And now again Cambridge University Press has done a good job. They have got a better translation of Tony's book. When you know we were studying, we were taught that Tony wrote the thesis about community and society. Now uh, the new translation says it is community and civil society. The concept of civil society for the first time in social sciences was conceptualized a person called Ferdinand Tonic. Therefore, civil society was emerging. What type of society was this? We will discuss when we deal with section you know, uh, B. But suffice at the moment, this civil society was studied in Europe systematically after the fall of Napoleon. What does it mean? The whole debate, scientific debate about modernity was taking place primarily in France and Germany. But the contemporary social science which started reigning the planet was prescribed in England. And what they did? They did a very smart thing which has not been debated much. They said the land will be studied by economics and not astronomy. Land will be studied in universities by economics and not astronomy. They said labor will be studied by biology under the guidance of mathematics. Earlier, mathematics was an independent science. Are you getting the point? What they are doing, there were four pillars of civilized life in science earlier, astronomy, biology, mathematics and physics. What they did that they conceptualized a new science on earth which is associated with the name of a person called Adam Smith and uh, it is today called political economy uh, and they teach a particular type of economics to which Karl Marx revolted in Germany, to which Imai Durkheim revolted in France, and to which uh, two people, uh, John Ruskin and uh, uh, William Morris revolted in England itself. And where the problem lied? When they made the first joint stock company in England, there was a very arbitrary criteria which was used as a scientific concept. 
you know, fixing the base of the lemma. And fixing the exchange rate between one labor and the other labor. What was the main charge against classical political economy by sociologists of religion? The sociologist of religion said economics is a hypothetical science at the moment. It has not become a proper science. It is still operating in the theological stage. Why? Because economists began with a wrong assumption, wrong hypothesis. And what was the wrong hypothesis? The hypothesis was following Thomas Hobbes that man is selfish, naughty, and brutish by nature. And everybody does anything only for furthering self interest. Other schools said no. He cried foul, Karl Marx said foul, John Ruskin said foul. This is not science, this is ideology. You know what was the procedural and legal and moral wrong in it? Because the science of economics while in the theological stage, this view of Newton, Hobbes, and Spencer was not verified or falsified to sufficient degree that man is selfish by nature. All the three said in their own language, where you have found this theory that man is selfish by nature, man is naughty and brutish by nature. You know what they did? They did not furnish empirical evidence in support or against. They just quoted the Bible. And they misinterpreted the biblical myth. The second thing which happened was that ultimately, we will deal with these questions later on, but please try to understand why sociology of religion was terribly important for all the three, Karl Marx, Agas Kunt, and John Ruskin. Because in the capitalist enterprise, the, you know, one person, the entrepreneur, had the backing of capital, the brute force. Whereas, the laborers were fragmented. They had nothing to fight with. And then Karl Marx said, there is a need of unity among the labor. But what will be the foundation of labor? Because laborers were migrants from different countries. They had not come from one community. They had not come from one, you know, religious group. They had come from different places. And majority of them came alone. They did not, you know, bring their family members and kinmen or women. They, they were physically alienated and fragmented. Since they, are, they were speaking different language, they were from different races, they were from different religious, social, cultural background, there was no unit, unifying force. Therefore, Marx, Agas Kunt, and John Ruskin 
they all said in different voices. They were not, you know, friends of each other. You know, they did not know each other. But there was one challenge, one danger, and everybody was almost simultaneously expressing the same language. And that was the language of love and sympathy, not the language of self-interest. But it was a very difficult proposition. What they did, for example, uh, the, even in this campus there is uh, enormous misconception about Karl Marx. Most people think that he is a materialist. No. He gave the materialist interpretation of known history. It is as if you are a cop and I am a thief and I am saying you are the thief and I am the cop. His opponents were materialists. Marx was not idealist, but he was also not a materialist. What he was? He was a neutral scientist. Please read Capital. He is neither supporting one party or the other. He is only challenging the scientific criteria to evaluate the exchange rate between labor and capital. He is only asking, is your criteria to evaluate the wage of a particular labor morally, legally, socially justified or not? And here comes the devil, Max Weber. Please do not uh, misjudge me. I am not uh, an opponent of Max Weber. I think he is a great scholar. But his work is more uh, scientific in sociology of law and not sociology of religion. He has done some good contribution in uh, sociology of economic life. But his, his work in sociology of religion is not only dubious, it is, it is full of uh, theoretical incons inconsistency and methodological errors. I am giving you two examples. Number one, uh, there is a uh, political pamphlet called Protestant Ethic and the Spirit of Capitalism. It is at par with the Communist Manifesto. Or it is at par with, you know, education and society. Durkheim wrote education and society when he was the advisor of the French government. And when you are advisor of a particular government, you are under pressure, you know, there are certain terms and conditions. You cannot compare Durkheim's, you know, education and society with the elementary forms of religious life. In the same way, Weber's Protestant ethic and the spirit of capitalism is a pamphlet, political pamphlet like the Communist Manifesto, which is full of good ideas, which is yet to be tested or verified on the ground. Now, what I wanted to stress is a simple fact. In the Protestant ethic and the spirit of capitalism, he had studied Calvinism. But in case, by chance, by accident, in case you have read the full book from back to back, what he does? He claims that his understanding of Calvinism is dependent on the interpretation of a Calvinist called Benjamin Franklin. He quotes Benjamin Franklin and not Calvin himself. Are you getting the point? Therefore, his study of Calvinism is based on secondary sources. 
Whereas when he starts studying Islam, he becomes the expert of Islam. He does not quote the Islamic theologian. Are you getting the point? Now, theoretically, it is, cannot be, you know, uh, explained. The mother of Max Weber was a Calvinist. The father was a Lutheran. Therefore, we expected that he will study at least Protestant Christianity from the original. But he thinks that he is incompetent to study Calvinism or Lutheranism. But when he tries to study the other religion, for example Islam or the religion of China or religion of India or even the Catholic religion, he becomes the expert. He takes Quran Sharif from the market and he starts reading. He doesn't know Arabic. He had never, uh, you know, uh, read Hadith. He never met any Muslim. He got a book and he has started interpreting it sociologically. He, he does the same thing about the Catholic religion. He does the same thing about religion of India and religion of China. Theoretically, methodologically, legally, morally, it is not justified. The case of Karl Marx is different. He never wrote any book on the religion. Therefore, I have not included any book of Karl Marx in the prescribed reading. I have included two Marxist readings. One, Origin of Family, Private Property in a State by Frederick Engels. This book is a very profound book in the area of sociology of religion. The second book which I have included is by Brian Turner. He is a Marxist sociologist and he had written a book which is included here. I have not included August Kunt, but I have included his ardent follower by Bukhain. And then there are other readings of the similar varieties. Therefore, classical sociology of religion means August Kunt, Karl Marx, and Herbert Spencer. Contemporary sociology of religion means Talal Asad, Peter Berger, Bhagwan Das, Essential Unity of All the Religions, Paul Hilal, Religion, Modernity and Postmodernity, Cloud Levi Strauss, Myth and Meaning, Bronisila Melinowski, Magic, Science and Religion, Nakamura, Three uh, way, uh, way of thinking of Eastern peoples, India, China, Japan, Tibet. And one interesting book written by an Indian, S. Radhakrishnan, Eastern Religions and Western Thought. There are many other books, but basically what I wanted to stress is that the classical sociological perspectives are classical modern perspective on the religion. Classical is also traditional. I am not referring to traditional classics in this course. I am referring to only classical modern texts. And second, by contemporary also, I mean contemporary sociologists of religion. Why I am saying this? Because there are two, three other systems of knowledge which claim to study religion. One is psychology. For example, Sigmund Freud, I have excluded him. Because in case you have read the rules of sociological method, you know that Durkheim says, and I agree with him, like many others, that psychology and sociology have nothing in common. Psychology had branched off from biology. Do you know? 
psychology is a branch of biology. It studies the individual, whereas sociology is the study of society or group or social phenomena. Therefore, we will not deal with psychology of religion. In the same way, there is theology of religion. Every religion has its own experts. They are called theologians of religion. We are not giving you the religious view of religion. What does it mean? It means two things. Number one, Islam as it is lived, Christianity as it is lived, Judaism as it is lived, so-called Hinduism as it is lived, and all other religions as it is lived, have its own experts. I respect them, we respect them, but we are not interested in the study of religion the way it is, what we are interested in. We are trying to make a comparative study of all the religions and trying to see what are the similarities and what are the differences in the function of religion in society. Got the point? I am repeating. There are two concepts, community and society. This course is primarily concerned with social function of religion in society of tonnage. Whereas all other religions separately are rooted in community ethos. Every religion, every religion has originated in a particular locality. Every religion is rooted in region or ecology. And every religion was a discourse of a particular gene too. Please make a note of the sentences. We will explain these sentences in later classes. For example, Talal Asad in his book published 1993, Genealogy of Religion, Discipline and Regions of Power in Christianity and Islam, which is very illuminating. What he tries to say is that he tries to understand different layers of meaning associated with the same term. This is also the case with Imai Durkheim. In my understanding, Talal Asad and his, his perspective is not in contradiction with the classical masters. It is a further refinement of the same. What he does in the case of the three masters, they were trying to formulate a paradigm of sociology of religion. And then there were many empirical researches of different religious phenomena from almost all the continents. Talal Asad and his contemporaries have tried to present a synthetic view of sociology of religion. Are you getting the point? For example, usually we think religion and dharma in India, they are one and the same thing. And religion of Durkheim also refers to the to the same. It is not the case. Religion in uh, uh, Christianity of Europe, primarily the Protestants, is a uh, different thing than religion which was existing in the Catholic world. 
it is like you know your mobile uh, you have iPhones these days uh, and uh, 2G, 3G, 4G, 7G, something like that. Uh, you can, you know, this is a very bad way of uh, oversimplifying a very complex phenomena. Uh, for example, the Catholic religion is the thesis of sociology of religion. Every, every Protestant uh, theologian and sociologist is attacking, the scrutinizing the Catholic religion. And sociologists are uh, made to believe that there was one thesis, Catholic religion, and there was antithesis, Lutherans, Calvinists, Junglians, Newtonians, you know, and then there is synthesis. This is not the case. What is the case? There was reformation, then the Pope reacted against the reformation and it is known as counter-reformation you people are not taught about counter-reformation and then after counter-reformation the reformists also changed their strategy now uh, in case you wanted to understand it i'll give uh, uh, one example for example uh, malaria is a very common illness, isn't it? And uh, it is uh, usually the product of uh, biting of mosquitoes. And then uh, many chemical uh, agents were prepared in the name of medicine which kills the mosquito. But uh, you know, once you use a particular chemical weapon against the mosquito, there is chemical reaction in the mosquito and the mosquito becomes resistance to that chemical agent. The same thing is true about bacteria and viruses. Therefore, there is a dialectical process, you know. There is a dialectical process, action, reaction, action, reaction, action, reaction, and there is a cycle which is going on. For example, uh, I, I will use the direct uh, Kantian term. Uh, he says very explicitly that there should be a cycle of theory and empirical research, lexis and praxis. It cannot be that you have given one theory and the empirical reality will be there all the time. Like social phenomena, the science is also dynamic. It is always, you know, evolving. It is always revolving. He said, this is August Kohn's, and I quote him, there is a circular dependence of theory and observation in science. There is a circular dependence of theory and observation in science. Therefore, there are many rounds of dialectics of thesis, antithesis, and synthesis which is going on, both in the society as well as in science. Are you getting the point? I am giving last example today. Uh, do you know the difference between conflict and competition? There are two terms, both refer to almost similar phenomena, conflict and competition. What is the difference? Two parties have vested interest to fight. In case, both the parties agree about each other's anger and there is a possibility of resolution later on. It is called competition. For example, uh, 
uh, you know that in India there is uh, election uh, uh, which is going on in UP, and the father and and the and the son they were fighting. In case you follow the fight between Mulayam Singh and Akhilesh Yadav, from beginning to uh, uh, till. Uh, now, because you do not know what will happen the next day, you will not make much sense. Why? Because there are two things which is happening. One, there is a fight between the father and the son. Okay? And once two people are fighting, there will be sentiment involved, anger, hatred, jealousy. But there is also, which is the latent, latent function. You know, there is a manifest function of conflict and there is a latent function of conflict. What is the latent function of conflict of Mulayam Singh's family? That Mr. Narendra Modi and Amit Shah media strategy he is not viable. From the day this fight began, no move by Mr. Ramit Shah makes any media news. You know what, what Akhiles Yadav did? He imitated, he imitated the style of Narendra Modi. He imitated the style of Narendra Modi. And what is the style of Mr. Narendra Modi? Aggressive propaganda. What is aggressive propaganda? Do not allow your opponent to be prepared to fight. It is unjust war. But why BJP uh, was winning? Not because of its organizational strength or ideological superiority but because of tactical reasons. In the same way, why Soviet Union collapsed? Not because Marxism is wrong as a theory, but because of tactical reasons. There is one social scientist, Suripto Kaviraj, who had claimed that the way August Kunt had studied the French Revolution, we should study the Soviet experiment or the Chinese experiment or the Nehruvian experiment. Are you getting the point? There, you know, uh, you are not following what Marx said. You are over relying on one interpretation of Marx by Lenin. Lenin and Marx may be plugged in one group. But please remember what Lenin did after the October Revolution. He was always getting experts from United Kingdom. He was always getting support from United States of America. Lenin was too naive to understand the complexity of capitalist manipulation which Marx was not in the same way, you know, uh, you can apply the same uh, 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 three stages or three phases thing on the actual social phenomena. You can study in the same way, for example, Lohia is the thesis, Mulayam Singh and the thesis, Achilles Yadav synthesis. M. N. Roy thesis, E. M. S. Namudripad and the thesis, and Prakash Karat and synthesis. Many people may disagree with it. I am just giving you a model. Jawaharlal Nehru has thesis, Indira Gandhi has antithesis, and Sonia Gandhi has synthesis. You know, and you study it from different perspective. You follow Marx, you follow Durkheim, you follow Herbert Spencer. And then you compare and contrast make different editorial groups, study the same topic from different theoretical perspective and it will be a very insightful, you know, excursus. Thank you.